sudden to sunny and beautiful. Amen. That's Kentucky weather, and we praise the Lord for good weather. Uh, let's do this. Let's talk a little bit about some prayer requests today. Um, be much in prayer for the Russell family. As those of you know, um, Miss Russell did pass away this past week. <clears throat> so remember that family, that uh, that husband, that church, those children. Um, I'm sure it's going to be some rough days ahead. And so let's pray that God give them comfort and peace in this time. Because that's all that we've got. Amen. And that's enough. That is enough. So let's pray for them today when you pray. Continue remember Miss Marlene as she is uh, searching out what she's got to look forward to as far as getting her pacemaker taken, taken care of. We want to see the Lord take care of her in regards to that. And so please remember her. Um, remember Miss Doris Kerr, she's still recuperating, but I reckon she's doing pretty good. So let's remember her when you pray, okay? And uh, I believe that's all I've got as far as what's been shared with me. Somebody else with a prayer request this morning before we pray. Anything? Okay, yeah. Miss Noel has had, her aunt has had a stroke. And this has been her fifth one. So let's pray for her, my goodness. Hannah, did you say you want This is your co-worker, what's her name? And her husband is... Okay. And this Bobby Miller, he was... Uh, was he a patient? Who is Bobby Miller? Okay. So you cared for him. Uh, a, a gentleman that Miss Hannah used to care for, Bobby Miller, has passed away. And their son wasn't allowed to be involved with him due to COVID. So God help. Pray for them. Pray for his wife, Margaret. And pray for his son, the Miller family. And remember, uh, Mary Troxel. this is a co-worker of Hannah's whose husband's in the hospital with COVID as well and not doing good. So pray for them. Amen. Somebody else, prayer request need to pray about anything at all. Well, amen. It's good to be saved, ain't it? And uh, I appreciate the grace of God. And we've got a lot to praise Him for and a lot to thank Him for, okay? And so uh, continue to pray for our nation. Uh, let's be sure we're praying for lost souls, amen? Uh, we've got lost souls coming in and out of our church on a regular basis. And we need to Lord with them and help them. Um, remember our uh, bus ministry and junior church on Wednesday nights. I'm thankful the Lord's opened some doors to get us some new riders, new young people that come in. And this is a blessing, amen? But we need to remember why they're coming. They're not coming for the warm meal we supply them. They're not coming for entertainment that we try to give them some entertainment. They're children. We want them to enjoy being here, amen? They're coming so that we can give them the gospel Amen. And our prayer is that they'll receive the gospel of Jesus Christ and be gloriously born again. That is our prayer. And uh, man, if we only knew some of the situations these young people come out of, it would stir our hearts uh, to pray and care about them. And so uh, please be praying for the young people that's coming in here lost and needing to be saved, pray for me. I desire your prayers as I try to stand to preach. And let's just, let's just ask the Lord to meet with us this morning. Amen. 
if he don't meet with us this morning in any shape, form, or fashion, it's not his fault. That's exactly right. If, God, if we leave today and we leave thinking, well, uh, you know, check that off the list. You know, I, I was at church. It's one thing to be at church. It's another thing to go to church and have church and meet with God and worship God. And so this morning when we pray, let's be sure to get our hearts right. Amen? Amen? A wicked heart is going to hinder the Holy Spirit from helping us. Uh, uh, I believe it was A.W. Tozer that said this. He said, God is always speaking to his children. And it's not his fault if we can't hear him. Amen, amen. Let's listen to the Spirit of God today. Let's pay good attention to what is going on around God's house. Amen. All right, Brother Beckham, go ahead and start playing softly. Everybody that would like to, you're welcome to gather in. And we're going to get down and worship the Lord together and pray over some of these prayer requests. But uh, you don't have to, of course, if you don't feel comfortable doing so, please pray where you're sitting and join in together in one mind and one accord. As we go to God in prayer, please, again, remember these prayer requests. Remember our church. Remember the Jubilee. Remember our nation. Remember the lost when you pray. Remember one another. <clears throat> Ask the Lord to meet with us today. We need Him. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank You for this day. Lord, I thank you for your many blessings. God, I appreciate your grace and mercy. Lord, I thank you for this church family that we've got here. Lord, we're nothing special. God, we struggle. But Lord, I'm thankful for a group of people that want to be and do something for you. And so, God, I just ask that you touch us today in this service. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, meet with each and every person here. And Lord, if there be a person, God, a soul that's not saved, Lord, somebody that is undone God and without you Lord I ask that you would deal with them and help them and convict them today and strengthen them as you'd see fit God and I pray that you'd give them the courage Lord to receive you as their savior before it's too late God I pray for that saved Lord individual that is that is Lord struggling maybe here in this life God I pray that they would Lord be expecting something from you God and Lord, you've never been one that <clears throat> didn't meet the expectation. But God, the Bible said you did definitely above, Lord, all that we could ask or think. And here in this service today, Father, I, I pray that you would, Lord, not only meet but exceed all expectations in the lives of your children. And Lord, use this service. Lord, might it be a monumental moment in the lives of your people here today. Lord, I pray for those that's tuned in on Facebook Live. God, I thank you for their faithfulness, Lord. I I miss them, <laughs> and Lord, I pray you'd strengthen them as well. And Lord, give them what they stand in need of here in these days. Many have taken, Lord, the, uh, the shot, and Lord, I pray that you'd bless that and help them with that, God. And Lord, I just pray that you'd have your will in regards to them coming back maybe again one day. Lord, I pray that you would be with these prayer requests, Lord. Be with the Russell family. God, I pray you'd be with that church family, or that pastor, her husband. And those children, Lord, I pray they'd have peace and comfort. I can't imagine how they feel and what they're going through, but God, you do. You know what they're going through. Lord, you, the Bible said, God, that, uh, that, you, that, that when it comes to our feelings and the infirmities that we experience, Lord, that you know what we're experiencing. And God, that you help us in those times. And Lord, I pray you do that for this dear family. Be with the sick, God. Be with those that are in need of a heavenly touch in regards to cancer and other Lord infirmities and Lord I just pray that you would uh, be with each and everything that's been mentioned today be with those uh, those that co-worker of Miss Hannah or be with that family of the the Miller family with the loss of that loved one be with Miss Noel's aunt Lord and help these needs and God most of all we just pray that you get all the glory and all the honor Lord that's what what's what we're here for God is to worship you, the one who is worthy, Lord, and we are so, Lord God, unworthy of any glory and any honor. And we pray that you get it all. We love you, Lord Jesus. And we ask these things in your name. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Youngins, let's sing some this morning. <clears throat> Is 
Is it working?
song said there's never a time that he's not been faithful I'm glad that I you know I've not been doing this thing as long as some of you have I've been saved since I was 10 years old I believe I turned 30 last year so that's 20 years I've been doing this and some of you have been married longer than that (laughs) but in my short 20 year existence in serving the Lord there's never been a time that he's never been faithful to me Amen. There's never been a time I thought that I couldn't turn to him. There's never been a time I thought he'd give up on me. There's never been a time that I didn't think I could turn to him. And I'm glad for his faithfulness this morning, aren't you? Would there be somebody with a word on your heart, something you want to say or do at this time? Anything at all? All right, Brooke. <clears throat> all right, Proverbs chapter. 28, Proverbs chapter 28, appreciate that singing, amen, from those young people, I'm glad that that they're willing to stand and sing, and appreciate their faithfulness to do that, it's pretty much a regular thing we do here now, every week, and uh, I love it, amen, I'm glad to know that there's still some young people out there that are willing to stand and sing for the Lord, They may not be the most polished in the world, but, uh, you know, we was raised with the motto, uh, <coughs> R-B-S. You say, what's that mean? Rare back and sing, amen. <laughs> that's how I was taught to sing. And uh, stand next to somebody that's pretty close to the right key and, and try to match and just do it for the glory and honor of God, amen. <coughs> and there's a lot more may be talented out there, but I sure like to listen to our young people sing for the glory of God, and uh, I just enjoy that. I'm glad that we serve a real God. That song said, you are God alone. There's been many other entities that man has given God-like status, if you will, but there is only one God. There is only one God. And it doesn't matter who you are, 
It doesn't matter of what demographic you were born of. I'm glad that he gave us his son who died on the cross at Calvary that we might be saved. And it is because of that that I qualify under that title of, Well, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm glad as a seven-year-old boy I called upon the name of God and he has eternally saved me. It just feels good to be saved, amen? And I'm glad he saved me and I'm humbled that I've been born again into the family of God and uh, I'm humbled this morning to try to stand to preach for you. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm burdened and I want this message to help us today. We need to hear a word from heaven, do we not? In a world where we get all kind of word uh, from earth, from man, uh, we hear everything and, and, and anything that we don't even want to know about or hear about, and yet you just walk around in this walk of life today and you're going to hear about stuff and hear opinions from people. And my goodness, some of the stuff I hear is just like, are you kidding me? Like, God help us. Hey, some stuff, it, I, I sincerely believe it takes, it takes effort to be so silly. Amen? I'm, amen. I think, it, I think there's people out there that spend time and effort thinking, how, how extremely silly can I be? Amen? And boy, we, I tell you what the church needs today. We need to get back to his book. Amen? We need to get back to this word of God right here. I was speaking to somebody recently who come out of a, 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 a cut of the cloth that's very, very over-the-top traditional. And he was telling me, he said, you know, he said in the, in the churches that I grew up in, he said, you were a liberal if you packed a Bible to church. That's what he told me. He said, man, if you took your own Bible to church, you, you must not trust the preacher. <laughs> uh, and you must not care about what the preacher says. Listen, the best thing you'll ever do for your life is get you a Bible. Like you need you a preacher. I'm thankful God called me in the ministry of preaching and I'm humbled by that and I want to give you something that will sustain you and help you. But man, nothing is going to help you as much as you and God sitting down with His Word and intimately digesting what thus saith the Word of God for yourself. Amen. If you're trying to get in on the coattails of a preacher, you'll die lost and go to hell. Amen. Amen. We need a word from heaven. And that's what God's given me today, a word from His precious Bible that I believe will help us. This message. In your ears back and listen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28. I'd like to hear you say amen. Verse 25. The Bible says... He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife. And all God's people said, oh my, amen. <laughs> he that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife. God help me. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. And I say, verse 26, he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be. That'll be all the reading this morning. I want to try to help us. I want to take a little bit, uh, you know, I, I, I get convicted when I start acting like I'm going to try to get deep because I, I know who I am. I've spent some time in this passage studying, and I've prepared a thought that I want to try to give to us today that I believe will help us in a way that we need help. You see, here in this passage, we find some key struggles in the life of a believer. And these struggles come from right here. Right here. Right here. There's too much said by the world that tries to encourage people, listen, to trust what happens in here over what happens in God's Word. And here we find some instruction for the people of God in how to live and think and act wisely in regards to how they deal with this organ of the heart of man. Because if you're not careful, you'll trust in this heart over what God has already said. 
and you'll allow your feelings to dictate how you live and how you act over what God has said here in this book. There's a common statement that's been going around lately and it says fact over feeling, fact over feeling. You got to go with what makes, listen, empirically uh, uh, proven statistics. You got to go with those things over what you feel like in here. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. Our authority cannot be what we feel in here. And listen, as a believer, now y'all listen to me now, as a believer, it's real easy to say, yeah, because there's men out there that have convinced themselves they're women. And that's the stupidest, craziest thing I've ever heard. Amen, amen, this is all true. But there's a whole lot of believers, listen to me, sitting in the four walls of a church house today in a padded pew who is depending on the feeling that's taking place in their chest. And just because it ain't as extreme as some of the craziness going on out there, don't make it any less wrong. Our heart, Farrell, our heart. Disney says, follow your heart. And that sounds so cute, but boy, it's so dangerous. So dangerous. I want you to look, first of all, at a proud heart. Number one, let's look at this proud heart. The scripture in verse 25 says, he that is of a proud heart. <clears throat> if you do a little bit of a word search, a little bit of diving, you use your Strong's Concordance, you use your Webster's Dictionary, you can get a good understanding of what this word proud means. And when you use your Strong's Concordance, it reveals that this word proud comes from a Hebrew word, listen to me, that denotes this understanding, an enlarged. Strong's even said it like this, proud means to be roomy. And some of us, and if you're like me, you're like, well, what's that got to do with pride, amen? Like, that don't make sense. But as I began to study, and as I began to read into this understanding, this, this term, this, this understanding of proud, a proud heart, and in the, in the context of it representing a heart that is enlarged, listen to me, denotes that it is, it, is, it is grown to a capacity that we cannot, in our own ability, fill it to its desires and its wants. Did you hear that? It is, listen to me, it is the, it's the idea that your heart is so big in your mind and in your understanding that you are constantly trying to give it what it wants with the hopes of filling, here it is, this all-powerful word, of filling a sense of fulfillment. That's what every single breathing person on this planet is living for. A sense of fulfillment. What do you want to be when you grow up? What, what kind of career choice do you want? Uh, uh, what kind of, uh, uh, what about this one? What kind of spouse are you looking for? What is it that you are looking for in a spouse that you think will give you fulfillment? <laughs> and so oftentimes, pay attention to me. It's preaching time. So oftentimes, we base all of those things on the member of our heart. And you know what that causes? A proud heart that is enlarged and roomy and growing all the time because guess what the heart does? It wants. It wants more. Guess what the heart does? Listen to me. It becomes, it becomes, uh, 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 it, 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 it grows, things grow old quickly, if you will. The heart gets to a place oftentimes where it needs, it needs something new, something different. And that's why you've got men and women who've been married for 50 years separating and having a divorce. <clears throat> the only reason something like that would ever happen, listen to me, is because they would start listening to their heart and saying, I, I, I need somebody different. I need somebody that's got this 
And some, why, what in the world? Why? What, who, listen, who would ever convince you of such a lie? Well, none other than our heart. None other than our heart. Our proud, enlarged heart. Not only is our heart enlarged, it's egotistical. Selfish. Self-centered. Conceited. And it's all about itself and what it wants. And let me tell you something. My heart and what it is convincing of me that I think that I should have may not be the same thing that your heart is convincing you that you need. <coughs> My heart's telling me I need a new Ranger bass boat. That's a lie. Somebody say, Miss Heather said, hey man, preacher. <coughs> Some of y'all's heart may say, well, I need a new car or, or I need an in-ground swimming pool or I need, need. That word need's a funny word, ain't it? Huh? I need. Yeah. You know what that is? That's your heart and it's egotistical nature. And that's our, guess what? The, it's our flesh. It's when we get our focus off of what God would have us to have our focus on and we start looking at what we think we need and we start looking at what the world has. Hey, let me say that again. We start looking at what the world has <laughs> and we start focusing on how much more and how better, if you will, their materialistic goods are than ours. And in those moments, we immediately divert to, to what our heart thinks and, and how our heart functions and we start convincing ourselves that our heart is right. And our heart is never right. Even when our heart may agree with the will of God, its, it's, it's purpose and its desire is incorrect and faulty. It's egotistical. Searching to fill the bottomless heart. And guess what a lot of times happens by a proud individual? The very thing that we see taking place here, it's getting more and more preachy all the time. God help us. A proud heart, it says, stirreth up strife. If you're a problem maker, there's something wrong with your heart. If you're constantly stirring up strife, there's something, some of y'all's like, Brother Kevin brought this for me. I actually had this message last week and didn't get to preach it, so hallelujah. Amen. And God's given me liberty to do it today. Strife. You know what strife is? Discord. It's, 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 it's problems. Strife is. It's evil. How many of you got your Bibles open? Say Amen. Look back in chapter 15. Let's look at what, book of Proverbs, great book, amen. You ought to try to read a chapter of it a day. You'll get it in a month's time outside of your Bible reading. It's a blessing. Look at verse, uh, chapter 15, look at verse 18, what the Bible says about strife here. <coughs> a wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. So if you're an angry person, guess what you like to do? You like to cause trouble. Hallelujah. Look at chapter 16, verse 28. <clears throat> chapter 16, verse 28. A froward man, this is to be a perverted and wicked man. A froward man, notice, soweth strife. He is the actual, listen, he's the one that causes it and institutes it. He's the one that puts the seed of strife in the ground that causes the uproar. The Bible said, and a whisperer separateth chief friends. Amen. Secrets are never healthy. Somebody help me. And when we go to live in this way and act in this way, guess what we're doing? We're causing strife. And we're just looking at what the Bible says about strife. Hallelujah. It's Listen, it's sowed by perverts and angry, hateful, ornery men. Embrace it and love it. How does that make you feel about when you cause trouble? Look at chapter 17, verse 19. He that loveth transgression... Transgression is not a hard word. Guess what that goes hand in hand with? Sin. I love to talk to children about what sin is. I had a conversation with one the other day. He's like seven. And I said, what is sin? Lying, cheating, stealing. 
I said, give me some more. He turned and looked at his mama and thought, and he goes, disobeying. I said, amen, amen. These are sins, amen. Transgression, adultery, adultery, fornication, amen. Uh, 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 the, the, the sin of, of lying, telling lies. I'm talking about bearing false witness. These are sins. You say, what's a sin? Disobeying God's instruction. It's not, only, it's not only performing something that you shouldn't do, it's not performing something that you should do. Amen. Sins. Guess what the Bible says about strife? There in verse, uh, what was that? Verse 28, no, that ain't right. 17, 19. He that loveth trans... Loveth strife. He that exalteth his gate seeketh destruction. <laughs> I'm going to pause right here for just a minute. Because listen to me. We're all and, and And God, of us, likely most of us, if not all of us, has been guilty of stirring up trouble for the purpose of causing harm to others. Say amen right there. I told myself this morning I wasn't going to tell nobody say amen. But I need you to say amen right there. I need you to. Most of us, if not every last one of us, has been guilty of stirring discord and strife between brethren for the purpose of causing harm. There's some people that that is their entire existence. If they ain't got something to fire them up, to fight with somebody and argue with somebody about, then they are a miserable individual. Why? Because they love strife. And guess what your King James said about them? They love sin. This is the type of person, listen to me, that gets a kick out of somebody living wickedly. This is type person that embraces and honors the sinner. I didn't say this type person that loves them and cares about them. I'm saying promotes their sin. A proud heart stirreth up strife. You know what the Bible said about strife? Those that love transgression love strife. If you're a type of person that's constantly, listen to me, constantly trying to stir up something just to cause trouble, there's something bad wrong with you. And it's a, listen to me, it's a heart problem and you're living under the jurisdiction and the leadership and the authority of your heart. And you say, what's the big deal about that? It's the same thing. That all that crazy, wicked, and absolutely vulgar things that's going on in the world, it's the same thing leading them. Right. And what makes you any better? What makes me any better? When I live my life and allow my heart to dictate how I think, how I talk, and how I act, and how I interact, and I allow my heart, listen, to convince me to cause trouble for the sake of causing harm, I ain't no better than anything going on in the world that we would consider to be vulgar and wicked. Because he that loveth transgression loveth strife. I'm, ho I'm trying to help us this morning. <clears throat> Chapter 26, verse 17. How many of you appreciate your King James Version by I'm thankful for this Bible that God's blessed us with in His Holy Word. Verse 17 says, This is good. This is real good. You should mark this one. Listen to me. He that passeth by and meddleth with strife belongeth not to him is like, that, is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. <laughs> How many of y'all is raised in the country? Help me. Uh, how many of y'all had just random dogs? We did. I met Scotch and Pepper and Fluffy and, and, and Wilma. I had a big hound named Wilma. And I had a buddy of mine, and he was just, he loved to pick. And he'd come over to the house, and he'd walk up. First thing he'd do, I'm talking about, he'd just like call strife contention. Amen. He'd walk up that dog and grab it by the ears and just make it mad for the sake of doing it. 
And I'd, I, every time I thought, why, why, why? That's a perfectly fine, happy dog. You're just ticking her off. Amen? You know what the Bible said? Well, I love that King James, don't you? It said when you walk past and you hear something, and you think to yourself, boy, they think that's big news. Let me tell them some big news. And you walk up, and you so strive, like the Bible said, that forward man, that perverted, ornery, wicked man, and you stick your head in something, you got no business. It's preaching time, ain't it? This is hitting home for every last one of us, and that's exactly what the Bible should <coughs> And all you do is meddle and cause a problem. It's just like that old boy that comes to the house and grab that dog back here. Just to make somebody mad. Tell me one place that Jesus encouraged us to make somebody mad just to make them mad. Tell me one, one place. Tell me one spot where Apostle Paul said, you know what's good for the edification of others? Causing trouble that'll help you not one nary spot in the whole bible and every last one of us listen to me if we'd be honest we'd say i've been guilty it felt good to know that i knew something they didn't and by sharing it with them it fired them up strife hmm I'm still on my first point. Evil. It's egotistical. It is enlarged. It's, it's evil. Absolutely evil. Chapter 26, verse 17. <coughs> Chapter 26, verse 20 said, Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceaseth. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Where there's no wood, the fire dies. Where there's no tail bearer, no tattletale, listen, no troublemaker, the strife goes away. Boy, ain't that, ain't that convenient. And then verse 21, as coals are burning, coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is the contentious man to kindle strife. <clears throat> you know what's been the death to most churches, you know, fire for God. The fire, the fire has put out more revival fires, put out, separated more unified believers than anything else. And it all starts with one person who had the desire in their heart to simply cause trouble for the sake of causing trouble and to give them, here it is, a sense of fulfillment. And feel better about themselves. And feel like they have accomplished something. Why? What did it all go back to? The proud heart. Pride is not a sin. Pride is the sin. Every time we fail him, every time we do something we shouldn't do, every time we don't do something that we should do, it's purely because we convince ourselves that we don't need to or we do need to and we are right. It's exactly right. And what must we do? We must, we must crucify. Paul said, hey, Paul said, I die daily. Why do he say that? Because if you don't kill your flesh, your flesh take how you think and how you walk. You will walk carnally and not spiritually. And listen, hey, you've been given, you've been endowed with the Holy Ghost. Why? To give you the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the fruit that comes through and by the Holy Spirit. And it's not God's fault when we don't allow the fruit of the Spirit to manifest in our life. And it all goes back to our, our proud heart. Not number one, we see the proud heart. Number two, we see placed hope, purposed hope. We see the trust of man. 
There in, 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 in verse 26, the Bible said, He that trusteth, or rather verse 25, He that putteth his trust in the Lord. <clears throat> he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. This trust here denotes the understanding of being careless. Paul said it like this, care for nothing. You know what we would say? Don't worry about it. You know what David would have said in the book of Psalms? He'd have said, fret not. Are y'all listening to me? Stop living in fear. Stop allowing your worries to dictate how you think and how you act. That's what it means, listen to me, to trust God. If you're allowing your fear to dictate how you think and act, you're not trusting God. Psalm 84 and verse 11, the Bible says this, For the Lord God is a sun and shield, and the Lord will give grace and glory. <clears throat> no good thing will He withhold from them that walk uprightly. To trust... It means to be careless. It means to be confident. It means to give God His credence. It means to be certain. Trust. It said this, listen to me. He that trusteth, or rather he that putteth his trust in the Lord. To trust God means to be confident in Him. To give Him His credence. You say, what do you mean? He's God. <coughs> He's God. You're not God. I'm not God. There ain't nobody walking on this planet that has met God's status. He's God. Why would we question Him? Why would we ever wonder if He's wrong? Why would we ever wonder if His promises, if, if whether or not He'll keep His promises that He's made to us, such as, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Such as, He that putteth His trust in the Lord should be made fat. Hey, you know what that means to be fat? It means to be took well care of. Let me tell you something, Brother Caleb took well care of. You get what I'm trying to say? Fat as a hog in mud, hallelujah, God takes better care of me, and he just keeps on taking care of me. Amen. And I don't understand. And look, it's not always easy, but he's always took care of me. Right. He's not always made me comfortable, but I've been took well care of. I'm no prosperity preacher. I'm not going to convince you if you be a Christian, you'll drive a Mercedes. Or you'll have the biggest, nicest, brand newest truck that's lifted and sick and just beautiful. And I mean, no, that I wish. But guess what? That makes them sorry Christians. No, God allows us to suffer sometimes. God allows us to, listen, God allows pressure. That's a better word right there, pressure. First part of 2020, <coughs> I'll never forget. My work went to nothing. I was seeing three to four days a week. I was seeing six to eight patients a day making good money. And I had been doing it for about two years with Lifeline. And pay attention to me. Month of January, halfway through the month, I went to go to work on Monday and did not have any patients. None. Pressure. <laughs> Scared. Worried. Calling my boss. What's going on? Oh, I ain't got no work for you, Caleb. Sorry. Maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow. Well, Caleb, we ain't got no work for you today, sorry. Maybe tomorrow, no work. After three days, I said, Heather, we're going to go broke if I don't find something else to do. Lo and behold, guess what I didn't know? There was a business here in Russell Springs doing pediatric physical therapy using the same documentation system that I'd already been trained on with KidSpot in Campbellsville. Didn't have to have any, not an ounce of training. I went and met her on Monday and started working on Wednesday. And then, guess what happened? Mid-March, we got the opportunity to open our home up to three wonderful, beautiful children and brought them into our home. And the next week, the lockdown took place. And that awesome company that I get to for still to this day at first, they sent me a message and said, we're not doing anything. Telehealth, nothing. File for unemployment, and good luck. <laughs> 
And I just brought three kids into my house. On top of my two and my wife. And look at me. I eat too much. She cooks too good. You know, I had a, had a, I had a family show up to our house with a minivan crammed full of food and an envelope full of cash. You know that? I had somebody call me and say, Brother Caleb, I need you to meet me up at the church. And I come up here, and they had a check for me. And it was no small amount. I don't tell you that to say, wow, wow, Brother Caleb, you're so lucky. You know why? He that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. I don't think I lost an ounce of weight during all that. Probably put some on. You get you getting what I'm saying? God's good. And we don't deserve His goodness. And He just keeps on getting better. And I just, I just can't hardly stand how good He is sometimes. But I've learned something. Better just trust Him. Better just trust Him. Better just not, hey, I better stop believing the lies and I better just trust him. You say, but Brother Shirley, but, but what's the Bible say? But what's the Bible say? He said, but, but, but listen to me. Stop listening to them. Start listening to him. Stop listening to what your heart says. Start listening to him. Well, I don't understand how I'm going to get the bills paid, Brother Caleb. Stop listening to what your heart says. Start listening to him. God has just provided over and over. And again, sometimes he, he allows us to go through some times of pressure. <clears throat> and guess what that is? That's for your good and that's for mine. And he's making you better. The only way to make a diamond is to use pressure. Trust. Not only do you see trust, you see this word fat. That's a good word, amen. Fat. And a hush goes over the crowd. You better watch how you say this word, Brother Caleb. That's a Bible word, calm yourself. Listen to me. In the book of, in the book of Psalms, chapter 23, how many of y'all familiar with Psalms, chapter 23? Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm going to flip over for the sake, or because I'm afraid I'm going to, and that's, you know, everybody can quote Psalm 23, but I'm up here in front of you, and that's not as easy. Amen. Thank you, Brother Zach. Brother Zach said, I bear witness. Amen. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me by, in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse 5, notice. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. The same Hebrew word that is translated to anointest is the same Hebrew word that's translated to fat. You say, what, what, okay, why? Well, what does fat make? Help me, mamas. What do you make with fat? In the skillet. Grease, that's a good word right there, amen. All, render it into a oil, right? Hallelujah, bacon. It's about to get spiritual in here, amen? You throw that bacon in that skillet, you line it out there, that fat starts to bubble and crisp up, and this, this clear, gloriously, I mean, it just smells so good. Aroma fills the room, and it is what? It's bacon grease. It's lard, whatever you want to call it. See, fat, pay attention to me, goes hand in hand with what? Anointing. Now, Probably not. They're probably not talking about pork grease, right? I mean, we're talking about Hebrews, right? Amen. We're talking about the fat that comes from olives, that fat, that oil, that, that, that grease, that, that liquid that you would anoint with. You see, fat is not just come, does not just come off of animals. We talk about good fats, amen? I'm not going to have a, a health talk with you today, but I'm showing you how that this goes hand in hand. You say, what are you getting at? You want to know why we ain't got a touch of God? We ain't trusting Him. Yeah. 
I'm not going to get to finish this message because I just keep getting hung. You want to know why we ain't got a touch of God? Because we don't trust Him. Preachers, we're getting in the pulpit depending on our own ability and not His ability. Did you hear me? You want to know why a preacher ain't got a touch of God? He's not trusting the Lord for it. He's trusting his heart. You don't know why, listen to me, you don't know why we show up at church dead as a doornail and can't hear and can't feel and can't look, hey, we're just as far away from God. We ain't trusting him. We're trusting ourself. We're coming to church in the energy of our flesh. Say, so how do you know? Because those that trust in the Lord are made fat. Thou anointest my head with oil. Ain't that wonderful? We got to trust Him. We got to trust Him. And when we trust anything and everything else, we will not have His touch. We will not have the spiritual anointing of the Holy Spirit on our life. We'll be dead. And I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't have any desire to be a part of something that's dead. <clears throat> and the reason we're seeing so many people leave... <clears throat> The, 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 the old path, if you will, of God's Word and start compromising to the way of the world and turning a church into a bar scene where it sounds like a rock concert. And people are dressed and look just exactly like the world does and it's might near vulgar and it is inappropriate. And there's no modest, not only apparel, but spirit in the hearts and minds of those people. The reason that that's the kind of church and environment that we're seeing today is because they're dead. And they're so desperate for something that feels, here we are again, like they're fulfilling themselves. Oh, we went to church today, and man, when that guitar strum, everybody stood and started dancing together. And the preacher started doing the, the I, 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 can't, I was going to try to say something clever there. But the preacher or speaker or whatever you call him come up the aisle, him and his wife skipping, holding hands, and she started the message off telling us how good we was. Are y'all, are you see what I'm saying? And man, when they leave, you know what they feel like? We've done something. Here's the problem. Who's the source? Where's the source of doing such things come from? Does it come from that book? Does it come from that book for a woman to stand and try to try to assert her authority over a congregation of people in, in, the, in the posture of preaching? No. Where does it come from right here? Fulfillment. Fulfillment. They're fulfilling their heart. Feels good to them. They feel like, God help us. Fact over feeling. And here's your fact. If you trust in your heart, no anointing. If you trust in Him, He'll anoint us. Young people, the reason we stick you up here and we ask you to sing <coughs> is we want you to know what it's like to do something for God through God. Pay attention, young person. When you get up here and you sing for Jesus, but you do it for yourself and in the energy of your own flesh and it's about whether or not you're getting heard or it's whether, it's whether or not they're singing your song with your solo or whether or not you're being featured or whether or not you're standing by whoever you are. Are you getting what I'm saying? Everything that we do, it must be about Him. And when it's about us, death. Why? Because those that trust, put their trust in the Lord, he makes them fat. And that same word, fat, was also translated to, Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. 
Brother Shirley, I've never experienced that. How many of y'all have heard preachers talk about my cup's running over? I'm so full. It's I'm drinking out of my saucer. Amen. <clears throat> Some of us has never got there. Why? Because we trust in ourselves. Right. We're depending on our own ability. The fat, it is anointed. It is appeasing. It is abounding. It's that good fat. Out heart, we see the placed hope. Lastly, we see the proclaimed heartbreak. He said there in verse 26, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. If you ain't marked that yet and you got a pen, you ought to mark that. That's pretty straightforward, ain't it, church? He that trusteth in his heart, fool. Say, why would it say that, Brother Caleb? You know, all my life, Brother Shirley, I've, I've listened to people talk about how that, that when I do something, I should do it from my heart. Do it heartily. Do it, do it, do it with, with what my heart has in store and, and give it my heart and all this stuff. Well, Jeremiah, I'll tell you why. Jeremiah chapter number 17, verse 9 said, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately Wicked. Amen. Who can know it? <clears throat> the heart of man has convinced men to commit the heinous, I'm talking about the worst imaginable things that's ever been committed. Why? Because, listen to me, they knew if I do this, my heart will be pleased. It's deceitful above all things. Hey! It's desperately wicked. Mmm. Solomon said in Proverbs, if you trust in your heart, you're a fool. You'll walk away from God's perfect will for your life. You'll turn away from God's perfect place for your life. And you'll become a castaway. All because you disobey God himself. What are you following today? Brother Shirley, I just feel like, well, let me tell you what you're, what you're risking if you're going by what you feel you're risking trusting in something that is uncontrollable. You're trusting in something that is unrealistic. Did you hear that? Unrealistic. The, imag the evil imagination of your heart is unrealistic. You will imagine things up and believe things that your heart conjures that is just not, it's, it's not real. It's a dream. It's a fantasy. Unreasonable. This is the proclaimed heartbreak for every single person that trusts in their heart. If I had a title today, it would be this. Eat your heart out. Eat your heart out. If you're going to trust in your heart, you go ahead. You'll be sorely disappointed. You'll be left with nothing and, and Solomon said it right when he said, if that's what you decide to do, you're a fool. If that's what Brother Caleb, just did any, look, ain't not one of us above falling into the trap of saying what my heart is saying is right. I've seen some of the biggest, most blessed, most absolutely abounding men of God turn away from God and trust in their heart. And guess where they are today? God knows where. You know what that prodigal son was doing? He was trusting in his heart. You know what that rich man was doing? That Look here, that opened his eyes up in hell. He was trusting in his heart. What does it profit a man if he gains and loses his own soul? You can seek after fame. You can seek after fortune. You can seek to have friends all over the place. If you think friends are going to give you fulfillment, you can seek after a big family. You want to, you want to raise up and grow a big family and, and try to have a family that gives you fulfillment. I'm for the family, but pay attention to me. My faith's not in having family. And if that, if that is what you're putting your faith in, your heart is uncontrollable. It's unrealistic and reasonable. Pay attention and I'm done. If you're, if you're putting your trust in your heart in regards to your soul, your heart will drag you to hell. 
If you're putting your faith and trust in your heart regarding your service, your heart will only hurt. Say, so Brother Shirley, I want to help around here at the church, but I, you know, I'm just trying to figure out where I, where I feel like I ought to go. Stop trying to trust your feelings. Look for something the church is in need of. Hey, make sure you're available and figure it out. Because may, may it be if you try to do something that only you feel like you can do, you're just going to cause pain and struggle and hurt. Why? Because if you trust in your heart, Solomon said you're a fool. If you trust in your heart regarding your storm, your heart will remove all hope and you will quit in the middle of your storm. There's been an ungodly amount of people that have quit because of the storm of COVID-19. I'm not talking about those that are faithful by face, Facebook and faithful by every avenue they can. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about some, listen, that when the storm of COVID-19 come, they thought, vacation, I'm done. I'm going to go live it up. I don't have to worry about church no more because... You know, governor said can't go to church. Are you listening to me? And if that is how you lived and function, and if that is how, and there's a world of people, I talk to preachers all the time, and there is a population of people that have cut off from the church and don't want nothing to do with it anymore. Why? They just trust it in their heart. And they wasn't trusting in the Lord. How many people have went through a hard time in their life and used that hard time to reason their quit for the rest of their life? Oh, God, help us. Don't let your heart drag you to hell. Don't let your heart cause you to hurt. And don't let your heart remove your hope. Let's stand to our feet this morning. <clears throat> Eat your heart out, man. <clears throat> Eat your heart out. If you're living by the energy, by the dictation and the leadership and the authority of your heart, man, you are looking at being very, very disappointed. But my soul, if you'll trust in the Lord, <laughs> if you'll look here, in all thy ways acknowledge Him and He'll direct thy paths. If you'll put your faith in Him, the Bible said, hey, if God be for us, who can be against us? The Bible said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. The Bible is explicitly clear that when His people trust Him and walk according to trusting in Him and live by faith and walk by faith and not by sight, then those people will be took plentiful care of. And he'll do abundantly above all that we ask or think. But for all those who depend on their heart and how they feel, Solomon said, you're a fool. And you'll suffer the consequences. Are you a troublemaker? Because you say, I don't know, Brother Shirley. I, I don't feel like I'm trusting my heart. Are you a troublemaker? Because guess what the proud heart does? It stirreth up strife. Where does, look here, where does the message land for you? And are you willing to do something with it this morning? We're going to open up these altars. We're going to sing a song of invitation. I invite you to mind the Lord today. You do what God have you to do. What page you got, brother? Sing for us. We got some already stepping out. Like I said, these altars are open. Maybe you ought to just step out and come down to the altar. Maybe you ought to take your wife or your husband by the hand and come down to the altar and say, Look, I've had a proud heart. I need to do something about it. I need to get right with God. With say, Brother Shirley, I don't want nobody to know that I've had a proud heart. Obey. Single person here is Are you willing to do for something no about other way it? Mind the Lord, church. Mind the Lord and do what God would have you to do. But to trust and obey 
Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sign nor a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toll he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay. For the Father he shows and the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Would there be somebody with a word on your heart this morning? Something you want to say or do at this time? Sometimes we need to be reminded of the things that we need to be doing for him. You can you can ask Brother Caleb, there have been many times where he just needed to talk to me about something I was doing wrong. And many times I didn't want to hear it. I'm glad for messages like this morning where I feel like my toes have been stepped on. I had to whip Elijah the other night and it made me feel bad but he needed to learn not to do what he was doing and I'm glad when the Lord shows me when I'm doing what I don't need to be doing for that correction if you've received a blessing this morning say amen all right choir practice this afternoon brother Cable choir practice at four o'clock service at five uh I don't reckon there's any sign up sheets for anything just yet for spring jubilee uh but we will have those for the meals and such uh so be on the lookout for those um do, is the sign up sheet for cooking for wednesday nights back there she is the sign up sheet <laughs> all right if you i mean don't write on sister heather like she's not the physical sign up sheet yes sister katie Explode. Amen. Thank you, Sister Katie. Would there be somebody else? Something you just feel like you got to say. All right. If not, let's all bow our heads. Brother Aaron, dismiss with a word of prayer, brother. Amen. Remember to put your offerings and your visitor cards in the back in the blue bucket. Thanks for coming this morning.